Welcome back guys. It's been quite a while since we've done an educational video and I thought it would be good to do something about pulse width modulation because you see that stuff everywhere. Not just in automotive but it's everywhere. It's in commercial, industrial, it's used control motors, solenoids, heater circuits, you name it, it's pretty much everywhere. So let's do a video about it and break this down and let's see what this PWM is all about. All right, guys, I'm saving us a little bit of time here. This is probably going to be a little lengthy video, but if you stick with it, you'll learn and know everything there is to know about PWM. All right? PWM is a process of where you have two states. Basically, you can think of them as digital, having two states. You're going to have a zero volts, and you're going to have a supply volts. And the supply volts can be your battery voltage. It could be your charging voltage. It could be 24 volt DC. It does not matter. So you have your zero volts and your supply volts. Now in this case, I'm using 10 volts DC. Makes our calculations a little bit easier to understand, but keep in mind that voltage can vary. Now there's two different ways that you can switch, basically, the, the supply volts and the ground, all right? And it's basically, you're, you're gonna get an analog voltage from these two states, and from that we're gonna call that pulse width modulation. All right, so for this one on the first circuit here, you can see that I have a push button in here, and you can see that I have it in the positive side. So this is going to be a positive side switch circuit, and this is a light bulb over here. And over here, I have a voltmeter. Now, the voltmeter is connected up over here, right across, basically right across the light bulb. All right, you can see I have this typically is going to go to ground, and that's typically grounded if we're talking about a car. All right. Now if you look over here on this circuit, this is a negative switch side. Here we have the push button, and now it's in the negative side of the circuit. All right? And you can see that the voltmeter is hooked up on the negative side of the light after the push button, and the other side again goes to ground, just as it does over here on the positive side. Now let's take a look at this one here first, the positive side switch. Now let's look at the voltmeter. Right now in this position, this here is a normally open push button. Now this could be a switch. Typically it's a transistor inside of say a PCM or some kind of controller. Right now it's open. So if I was to look at this voltmeter, what would I read? I'd read zero volts. So we look right down here, we get zero volts. This is gonna be our zero. And then up here, we're gonna get our 10 volts. Now, I push the button. Now it's going to go up. It's going to rise to 10 volts. What's it going to do? I'm going to hold the button in for so long. I have my 10 volts. Then I'm going to let go of it. Then it's going to drop back down to zero. And let's say I push this button off and on, off and on. And so I can repeat this pattern. This is what I would get. Depending on how fast I would open and close that push button. Okay. Now there's two things we need to know. We have a time this, this is being on, that's when I push the button, and then we have a time of where it's off. Now when I push the button on up here, push it down, that closes the circuit, I get my voltage. So this up here at the top is going to be called, and let me just put it, let me put it over here. This part up here is going to be my time that it's on. Okay, now this is when I push the button. Now when I let go of the button, now it's gonna drop back down. So this period in here is my time that when it's off. Okay. All right, now it's important that you got to know which one of these circuits that you're using when you're gonna figure out some of this stuff. Again, this is positive side switch, and you can see that the on time is going to be at the top. The off time is going to be down on the bottom. Now let's take a look at this one over here. Right now, I'm looking at it. I have my voltmeter hooked up, as you see here, and right in this state, when it's off, I'm not pushing the button, what is my voltage going to be? Well, it's going to be... 10 volts. And the reason for that is, is the positive here is coming on down the line. It's going through the filament of the bulb. 
And now I have my 10 volts sitting here and my voltmeter is actually measuring that 10 volts. So right now, by me not pushing the button, this is my time off. Now I'm going to push the push button. Now it goes down to zero volts. Okay, so over here, zero volts. That's when I push the button. Now I'm going to keep pushing the button and it's going to stay on for so long, depending on how long I push the button. And now this is going to be called my time on. I let go of the button. It rises back to the supply volts of 10, and I'm just going to push and release the button, and then I'm going to get this waveform. Okay? All depending on how long I open and close and push the button. An important thing to recognize in here that if you have a positive side switch, you can see that your time on is going to be at the top. Your time off is going to be at the bottom. Where on the negative side switch, your time off is going to be at the top, and your time on is going to be at the bottom. Now, most of the solenoids and things on the, on the car, most of them is negative side switch. But you need to verify that because some of the things are positive side switch. So you need to verify that, and you can do that by looking at the diagram. Now, I mentioned that you can get an analog voltage which can vary from zero volts to your supply volts and it depends on the on time in relation to the period of the waveform. Now we're going to go over that. Now first let me put up what the equation is to calculate duty cycle and we're going to break this here down and we'll make it simple. There's not really much to it. The duty cycle and you've heard that before. You know, you watch some videos, somebody say, well, it's 50% duty cycle, it's 20%, or it's 80%, or whatever. The duty cycle is equal to the time on divided by the time on plus the time off times 100%. Okay? Now let's break this all down. Let's see. Let's go back to our little waveform. Now I'm going to draw one up. You already saw what we had. Okay. I'm going to use a ground side switch. All right. Now remember, if it's ground side switch, this is the time that it's on. It's at the bottom. Right. The time that it's off is up here at the top. Okay. Now. Let's say I'm looking for the time that it's off. And let's say that it is, oh, I don't know, let's uh, make up some number here. Let's use, uh, let's say, let's say it's uh, four milliseconds. It's on for four milliseconds, okay? So this down here is time on. Okay, now, what is our time off? Okay, now let's make this one up. Let's make this one to be, say, I don't know, let's say one millisecond. Now, it's not the scale, right? Maybe I can make it a little bit better. Maybe it'd be like, maybe a little bit like that, maybe. Let's, uh, let's try to get it in perspective here. Okay, and we're going to say that this up here, right, this is our time that it's off, and this is going to be time off, and we're going to say that's one millisecond, okay, all right, and let me write down here that this is uh, switched negative, we're switching to the negative side, okay, All right, we good so far? All right, so now we take our time on. Well, what is our time on? It's on for four milliseconds, all right? 
So up here, I'm going to put up here four milliseconds. What's our time on? Four milliseconds. Plus time off. The time off is one millisecond times 100%. Okay? And of course, this is going to give us our duty cycle, and which is going to be in percent. All right? Now we got four milliseconds. Right? And that's going to be four and one, that's five milliseconds, okay, times 100%. Milliseconds cancel out. Five into four is going to give us 0 0.8 times 100%. So our duty cycle, which is in percent, is equal to 80%. Okay? Got all that? Simple. There's nothing to it. Alright. Let me make some more room here. Let's take a look at this right here. Let's go back to the waveform. Now, let's say that right here, at the starting of that pulse, right there, This is the leading edge of this pulse. It goes up. It stays off for a millisecond, drops back down. Now it comes on, stays on for a millisecond. Now it starts back up. At that point right there where this here next pulse starts, right over here, okay? From there to here, that's one cycle of this here pulse train. That is equal to the time off plus the time on. That is equal to what's called a period. A period is the time of one cycle of a waveform. Okay. Now, knowing that, we can calculate what the frequency of this pulse strain is. All right. So let's go over here. We want to know what the frequency of this is. So frequency is equal to 1 divided by time, which is in seconds. So now if I take, and I want to know what is the frequency, the time, seconds, this is the period, okay? And this is the time off plus the time on, which will give us that one cycle. Well, we look at one millisecond, right? There's that time. Plus this time here, that puts us back from start to the start. That gives us a total time of five milliseconds. Now, if we take that, that's going to be equal to 5.005 seconds. When we divide that out, we will get 200 hertz. Let's say that we want to figure out what is our voltage based off of our duty cycle. What if we know our duty cycle, but we don't know what the voltage would be? All right, let's figure that out. Let's say that we're going to start out, we're going to have voltage out, okay? This is what we're trying to figure out. And we're going to say that time on, which you've already seen, divided by time on plus time off, okay? And then instead of the times 100%, Okay, we're going to put in times voltage in. Now the voltage in is your max supply volts. That's your B plus. Now you have to know what that is. And let's say, you know, in the case that I have with the examples I'm showing, let's say it's 10 volts. Okay, we're going to keep all this simple and use the examples we already presented. All right. Now if you remember, our time on was four milliseconds, okay? Now, our time on plus time off is five milliseconds. Now, what was our voltage in? That's our max supply volts. That was 10 volts, okay? All right, now, we can see that five into four is gonna be 0 0.8 times 10, all right? Now, if we multiply that out, we can see that we're gonna get eight volts, okay? 
So for that 80% duty cycle that we had, we're going to get 8 volts out. All right. So now you can see there's a proportion here. It's all about a ratio. Time on to the time off plus time on, of course, which is equal to the period that we already discussed. Okay. Now. Now let's get to let's get to the last part here. Let's say that you measured the voltage, digital meter, and you know what your supply of volts is, and from that you want to calculate what your duty cycle is. All right. So it's simply all we have to do is you can see that it's a ratio, right? One thing, you know, it based on another quantity. All right, so now, let's say we have our supply of volts, in my case, 10 volts. Now, when we know we got 10 volts, we know we have 100% duty cycle, okay? So, we're going to write down 100%. So, we know those two go together. And now, we're going to be equaling, equal to, right, we measured, we measured 8 volts. Let's say we measured 8 volts. Now we know we should get 80% duty cycle because we already figured that out. So our 10 volts, we'll slide across, so it would be 8 volts up here, right? And then on the bottom, well, we don't know what our duty cycle is. That's what we're trying to figure out. Now, if we take 10 volts times X, we're going to go get 10VX, cross multiply, right? Cross multiply here. Now, I'm going to be equal to 8V 100%. Okay? Now, I want to solve for X. So to get rid of 10V, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 10V. So I'm going to divide this side by 10V, and I'm going to divide this side by 10V. Okay? Now my 10Vs cancel out, leaving me with X on this side. Okay? Now my Vs are going to cancel out, my voltage units are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave me with 8 over 10. Okay? Now we already said that this, this is 8 tenths, right? We can say that's point 0.8. Now we're left with 100%, which is times 100%. Now if I take point 0.8 and multiply it times 100, I'm going to shift my decimal point two places to the right, and I'm going to drop the decimal, and then I'll be left with percent. So that's going to give me 80%. Okay, and that's pretty much it guys. That's pulse width modulation in a nutshell. So you can see how the correlation is about how everything is uh, in proportion to the duty cycle. So you can get any kind of analog voltage that you want out from zero volts up to your supply of volts just by changing the amount of time that the load is on. And of course now the load can be switched on the ground side or it can be switched on the positive side. Well there you go guys. Pretty simple, right? So now you know everything about pulse width modulation. So when you hear that term comes up again, now you know everything about it. You know how to calculate it. You know how it's derived. And like I said, it's used everywhere. And you can see that it's nothing but a proportional value that you're going to get out, an analog value between two states zero volts, your supply of volts, and you can get that value out by just varying the percentage of time that the own time is in relation to the period, which is the time off plus the time on, one cycle. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up, and hopefully it'll be in, uh, maybe in the next video we can take and do it a practical example. We'll get out there on the car. I still had the Ford Escape. I hadn't forgot about it. In fact, it's already fixed. This has been running for weeks, no problem. And so we'll tie that in a little bit, maybe with the idle air control valve, and then we can see how these examples here can be applied to the real world, and you guys take care. We'll see you in the next one.